Okay, welcome to the Pickup Korea podcast, and today I'm with a very special guest, uh, my buddy Frank, who's been in Korea how long? Oh, maybe six years. Six yeah. years, okay. Kind of on and off, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Frank is kind of in a unique position because while most guys here, they get here, maybe they're teaching English or they're traveling here, maybe they've lived here for several years, but uh, Frank is actually married and kind of in a somewhat unique relationship, right? It's somewhat of like an open relationship. Yeah, not, not super typical. Not super typical, right? All right. So uh, one thing I knew you from like we met probably like six years ago, and you never really had much trouble. Like you, you know, you always had attractive girls you were dating and stuff like that. But um, I'm really curious, like what motivated you to get married? Because you could have kept living that single life. You're meeting, and every time we'd meet up, we'd talk about the latest girls you met and whatnot, right? And there is the thrill of the chase, right, to an yeah, extent. Yeah. But uh, what was your motivation to get married here? Um, I guess in my case, like, uh, I still, you know, enjoy the thrill of the chase, but it started to get a little repetitive. Um, I found that going out was fun still, but like, I didn't want to drink quite as much as I used to. And like, some of the excitement was fading a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And just, you know, I felt like some of the girls were the same as the previous girls. So it's like, it got a little bit repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, that was one aspect of it. Just a kind of got a little tired of it but mm -hmm. additionally I always kind of wanted to have a kid like family is important for me yeah family is quite important to me um and like I always wanted to have children mm -hmm. uh so because of that I guess I kind of just was the natural progression for me yeah. okay cool yeah yeah I mean I think a lot of guys that come here initially they come here probably in their early 20s but there are a lot of guys who I've coached or friends who are like in their late 30s and they are looking to settle down and you know, so I think that it's kind of cool to sit down with somebody like you as different, you know, you have a whole different perspective and view and whatnot. Um, what do you think are like the main differences between the single life and the married life here in Korea? Uh, I mean, the obvious one is that when you're married, uh, unless you have a semi open situation like me, uh, you have a lot less independence. I mean, especially with some Korean women, they can be a bit, um, you know, kind of like uh, what is it? controlling in a sense mm -hmm. uh, but not all Korean women are like that I guess mm -hmm. uh, but yeah basically less independence you can't go out when you want and do what you want so that's a big factor um, okay. and, yeah, less drinking nights less meeting with your friends um, and again in my case like I kind of was getting a little tired of that all the time anyway mm -hmm. so for me and now I have a nice balance I still go out some mm -hmm. um, but you know just at the time that was kind of what I wanted that's a big difference. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, we were talking earlier before recording this, but uh, I was talking about how like Korea has the lowest birth rate in the world of all the developed countries. And uh, I was saying like, man, they really should incentivize people to have kids here. And then you were telling me about all these like sort of benefits of being married in Korea and actually having kids here. They are actually incentivizing people because of the low birth rate, right? So maybe you can talk about like, what are the advantages of having kids in Korea? Because clearly there are some, right? Compared yeah, I mean, to the States or whatnot, right? I, 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 it would be hard for me to find uh, or to think of a better place to have kids at the moment, to be honest. Like in comparison with the States, well, there is no comparison. Um, <laughs> Korea, essentially, for you to have a child in a hospital here, you pay almost nothing with just typical insurance. Right. Um, it's very, very cheap. Uh, and then additionally, after you have a kid, they provide you with a lot of benefits, like they pay, uh, give you like a stipend for um, daycare, for childcare. Oh, nice. Um, I believe it's your third kid, they'll pay for all of your university expenses. Wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, and there are other benefits additionally as well, like uh, hospital visits are way less expensive. Right. Yeah, it's quite good. So it's okay. almost essentially like they're paying you to have kids here. Right, and then you're mentioning, what was it, like the healthcare, like to... To have healthcare for your whole family, like full yeah. coverage, it's like something ridiculous. Like, yeah, recently I left, uh, I, I was working for a, a, an office environment here, and I recently I left, um, mm -hmm. so now I'm just paying for my own government insurance for the whole family, and it's it's 130,000 won <laughs> for the whole family. Yeah, yeah, if you think about it in American money, that's like $35, $40 per person, yeah, exactly. and you're, you're fully covered, that's amazing. On top of that, actually, they give you a lot of incentive uh, regarding like houses or loans or things like that, very, very low interest loans. Right. Right. So if you want to buy a house or if you want to do like junsei, yeah. things like that, right? Yeah, it's quite okay, good. cool, cool. All right. Um, all right. So you mentioned we just kind of talked about how you're married and everything and you're in kind of a unique um, setup, right? Like most people who are married here in Korea that I know, they're just they have a typical, you know, whatever traditional marriage or a lot of Korean guys that I know they're married, but then they go to, you know, 
room salons and hookers on the side with the boys after work for business negotiations and drinks and you know a good night out with the boys right sure. but uh can maybe you can tell us a little bit about how your relationship uh sort of the dynamics of it and then how you set that up sure. people will be interested in i think um yes yeah, so i guess my relationship has evolved a bit um with time and having a kid now but initially it was m mostly an open situation um with me more meeting other girls i mean at the time my, my girlfriend now wife she wasn't really interested in meeting other guys um yeah so it's basically i guess just me and then the potential for us like having threesomes or you know doing things together mm -hmm. um and the, the way i set that up was essentially just i guess being honest about my boundaries and who i am right from the beginning so mm. i think a lot of guys come into a relationship thinking that they need to put on some kind of fake persona mm -hmm. right uh kind of you know to to, to woo the girl mm -hmm. right yeah. um but what they don't realize is that if they're doing that that's what they're gonna have to maintain because if they suddenly change and say oh actually i want to date another girl right but for the past two years they've been this like innocent good guy right the woman is going to essentially look at it as deceitful. She's mm -hmm. going to look at it as like a complete change in a personality, like she was deceived. Right. And she's going to either completely, you know, go off the chain and freak out, mm -hmm. or um, she's going to do the same. Exactly. Just, just for revenge or to get even. Right. Uh, so that's kind of like relationship ending, or it's, it's not going to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in my case, like I said, is I just set it up from the beginning uh, by being honest and like defining myself as who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, that included uh, dating a lot of women in the past, you know, kind of not being interested in traditional marriage uh, mm -hmm. and traditional, like, uh, you know, monogamous style situation. Mm -hmm. So did you verbalize these things to her? Yes, yes. Basically... Regularly, I explained who I was and that I, right. you know, I wasn't interested in a typical marriage. Okay. So you're very clear about yeah, that. I, I explained that right off the bat. Okay. Very early into dating. Okay. To just let her know who I was. Right. You know? And she can either stay, you know, stay or if, she, if yep. she's not into you, then... Totally. It's, you I mean, know. it's a risk that you take, but sure. it, it's not always going to work. Some girls might just not vibe with that. Right. But I think you save yourself the trouble then, because... Yep. If you try to do it two years down the road, you've already invested tons of your time, and then she bails. Right. Um, you know, and the chances of her bailing are higher as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not really a good way to do things. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think you're better off knowing early on if a girl is just not going to accept that. Yeah, I totally agree. That's one thing I find with a lot of clients that I coach is that they they'll often blame the girl for a lot of stuff like, oh, why is she texting me so much? And why does she want to meet me every day? And then we go, we kind of backtrack. And so it turns out that he got her phone number and he was texting her every five minutes and he was proposing to meet up. But now he wants to change things, you know, to be like Mr. Player who, you know, dates a new girl every night. But he actually set those expectations. And so she's just sort of responding to what the frame that you set, right? And so if anything, you know, being more at least you, you don't necessarily need to verbalize everything initially, you know, maybe later on in the relationship, but just the way that you come off, the way you frame things, what kind of person you are, you want to be congruent and authentic in the beginning, just as you are the next week you meet, the next month, the next year, right? So I think that's a really critical lesson that uh, guys really need to learn because, manip you know, really manipulation is putting on a different persona where you're, the, like you were saying, kind of like, I'm going to take you to these really expensive places and wine and dine you and act super nice and friendly, right? When that's not even who you are, right? So, yeah, it's fake, exactly. exactly. You know, one other thing to mention as well, um, in the case of my situation was, I guess, Another factor in regards to how I set things up in the beginning is um, because I really care about having a family and kids, mm -hmm. I made it really clear that you know, even if I have interest in dating other women and like my views on traditional marriage in the sense of monogamy are not uh, that, like I don't want monogamy, um, I do want to be a good father and like, you know, yeah. and like have, have that stable family mm -hmm. where I take care of my, my son or daughter. Sure. Um, and you know, of course support my wife as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to come back to her mm -hmm. because I want to be with her for a family. Right. But occasionally, you know, I don't know. You know right. And so. might wet your whistle uh, here or there, right? So, you know. So she trusts that I will, you know, be true to my work. Right. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, yeah. Do you think that, uh, she was initially, you know, your wife, was she initially open to this kind of thing? Or do you think that it took a little bit of, you know, persuasion or she was really attracted to you and she was drawn in and, you know, she was just okay with those terms? I guess 
to be honest, maybe there was a little bit of a factor in her chasing me, I guess, kind of from the beginning. Um, so, you know, that kind of put me in a position of higher value, kind of, essentially. Okay. Um, and then also in the beginning, there was kind of a me not being sure, because I was kind of thinking about leaving Korea at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was me not sure I wanted to be in another relationship, actually. So she was even more chasing me in that regard. And I almost kind of said, just do whatever you want. I don't want to right. be in a relationship. Kind of take her to leave it, you know. Yeah, we ended up, you know, being together sure. in the end. But she was kind of chasing me throughout that process. So right, right, I right. think because of that, uh, I had a higher value position. If you're from sure. a lower value position of chasing a girl, the likelihood of her accepting something that's even slightly outside of her comfort zone is right. much smaller. Exactly. So she was sort of in reaction. You were the, it's the way it should be. The man should be the leader, you know. I mean, it is it is a team. It is a win-win thing. But essentially, you are the one who's leading. You are the, kind of the rock. And then she is sort of reacting to your going along with it. You, you're the one with the strong exactly. frame, right? And that's where a lot of guys get it wrong, too. Like when they try to be that overly, oh, my God, fighting for rapport and chasing her and texting her texting her too much and like really like trying to weasel in anything right so yeah that's another critical uh, uh, point for sure I, I'm curious actually I know a lot of guys would really wonder about this so you've obviously you know you've slept with other girls and you travel a lot you mentioned and um, you know you have kind of an open relationship did you ever discuss whether if she sleeps with other guys or did that ever come up or is it kind of don't ask don't tell or even I would also be curious like how would you feel if she you know, she went out with her friends on a Friday night to Itaewon or what have you, right? And, you know, maybe she uh, she said, I'll be home tomorrow, you know, you know whatever, I, after breakfast or whatever, right? It, this is a complex um, debate I have, I guess, in my own mind. But in the beginning, I kind of told her before we were committed that essentially if she does meet me another guy, I just don't want to know about it. Mm -hmm. That's basically the bottom line. Like, I, I don't want to have any information about that interaction. I'd rather just that it never exists yeah. at all in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because of that, again, she was kind of chasing me. Like, she, she thought mm -hmm. I just didn't really give a shit. Mm -hmm. um, but truthfully, like, especially as we became more involved, mm -hmm. I do care a bit just because I think that, you know, women view sexual interaction a bit differently than, than men do so like women sure. are more likely to get emotionally connected to someone else mm -hmm. um which could be really dangerous for a relationship sure, sure sure so in that sense like uh you know i explained that to her that i think that the dynamics of relationship are not the same for a man and woman and there okay. are certain things that i would accept but mm -hmm. you know other situations that i think i wouldn't and they could be quite dangerous for us Sure, sure. So like in terms of, you know, say she slept with another guy, you might not necessarily care, especially if she didn't mention it, but it's more so if she maybe she was emotionally committed to that guy and that sort of yeah, that, that sort of sabotaged your uh, family life and the relationship with your children. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, mm -hmm. you know, and still to this day, like, I guess I said that I, I just don't want to know. Don't ask, don't tell in that regard. But it's 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 a little uncomfortable to think mm -hmm. about it. I think you just got to suck it up sometimes. Like if there's some tiny indicator mm -hmm. that maybe you know she might be meeting someone else, I just ignore it. I just mm -hmm. you know I just control my curiosity or emotions, and I just say whatever. It doesn't matter. I've, I've right. met a ton of other girls. I have no reason right. to say anything. Right, right. And at the same time, I think you mentioned that. Uh, you also, I mean, you sleep around here or there, but you also kind of have an agreement or understanding that you're not going to be emotionally committed to another girl. Like, you you might go out for a night and have fun or have a date here or there and, you know, have a good night together with another girl. But you're not, it's not going to be like a regular thing where you have it's a, not, like a girlfriend or, you know, like a second wife or something like that, right? Right. Okay. Okay. That's important. So. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, how about this? Any like wild stories? Because I know that you travel quite a bit. You said you were in Russia not that long ago, uh, pre-COVID, right? And uh, you know all these other countries in Eastern Europe, and I think you said Africa. You went to Egypt and places like that as well. So uh, any other like any cool wild stories while you're traveling, while married? Yeah, when I was uh, when I was staying in uh, Romania, I, we were in a small town uh, in Transylvania. Actually, it's called Brasov. Mm -hmm. um, and I was with my, my girlfriend at that time and like uh, I essentially left on a short trip myself to go to Bucharest mm -hmm. uh, and I met up with a couple of the Romanian girls that I'd kind of like set up on the side like mm -hmm. a little solo trip mm -hmm. but yeah the, some of the Romanian girls are just completely crazy like very very freaky you know like wow, very, yeah. very, for, you know for a first time interaction just like mm -hmm. s straight to it 
Wow. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that a lot about Romanians, actually. Yeah, very, very fun women. Okay, okay. Um, but and also Russian girls. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I don't know how graphic you want to get it, but like no, it's it's fine. Hey, yeah, I love uh, I love Russian girls. I was planning to go there, but then COVID sort of derailed my you know my plans and everything. But I've you know dated Russian girls here in Korea or in Bali and other places like that. So, so yeah, there was another girl that I had arranged to meet um, mm-hmm. in Novosibirsk, mm-hmm. and she like arrived at the airport with like a balloon. <laughs> like a balloon waiting for me, like welcome to Nova Sibirsk. <laughs> it's like, that was oh nice. wow! And she like drove me around. It was like my escort of the town, and then like, wow. she, she had bought all this like special lingerie and all this crazy oh, shit. Oh wow! wow. So that was pretty cool to like have like a yeah. person like waiting, to, like excited right. to have me there. That's pretty sweet. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool, man. So she was your uh, pickup service chauffeur, yeah. set up your accommodation, the chef, you know, and sex time. And sex time. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Um, I think another thing that I'm curious about personally that I'm curious about is like how is how has having a kid or having children that kind of thing how has that changed you as a man um yeah it's tricky I, I guess I didn't have like a specific moment of change like I didn't like feel something it's kind of more of a gradual thing but mm-hmm. um you know I've kind of become more consistent about work you know mm-hmm. my intention to like have more wealth and assets than I ever was before mm-hmm. um, partly because I you know I, I have a daughter now but mm-hmm. also uh, just because I guess I'm transitioning in my life it's become more of a priority than it was before whereas before it was more like new experiences traveling the world like money was meant to be spent mm-hmm. now it's more like I still want to have experiences of course but I want to have like a safety net and kind of like sure. be consistent in that regard there's sure, another person sure. that depends on me right 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 so before it was only all about you but now you have somebody else riding on your totally. decision so yeah yeah but that hasn't been all bad oddly enough mm-hmm. like uh you know I I'm married now and like I'm not really out hunting all the time anymore but mm-hmm. uh, probably in the best shape I've been like I'm the strongest nice. I've ever been I've been going to the gym really consistently for a year nice nice nice. I okay. guess in regards to like wanting to be healthy again because I uh-huh. want to be consistent and healthy like for right. my family and like to take care of them and stuff. so that's good it's been a good driver for you to be more disciplined more yeah. consistent more healthy that's good sounds yeah. like it's had positive uh, influences on you as well right um, I think we'll have one final question which is uh, you know, there might be guys out there who they have a girlfriend right now here in Korea or elsewhere, right? And they're considering getting married with her or, you know, they're at least they have the thought they might be in that stage, right? What would your advice be? Because I see a lot of guys, you know, I see guys like you get married and it's sort of a positive thing and whatnot. But then I see other guys who are sort of in a less optimal position. So what would you say, like, what should be the, you know, the standards or what kind of what do you think is like the necessary steps or the necessary prerequisites i guess you would say that guys should consider you know instead of just jumping right in because a lot of guys might just oh, i like her it's going well i'm just gonna jump in you know so what would, would say you say that, you know marriage is it's something that d- definitely changes your life so i would say that <clears throat> um make sure that you're not doing it for someone else mm-hmm. you're not doing it because society or even your girlfriend expects it um do it because you have a desire to and uh, I've also said personally like for me I always want a kid it's like the marriage itself is not really that important my life didn't change much after marriage mm-hmm. but I got married because I want to have kids mm. and because it provides benefits for kids okay so I would say that make sure that it's something you actually desire and it mm-hmm. provides a benefit for you mm-hmm. right okay um, additionally make sure you've uh, gotten all the things you want to do done first mm-hmm. or set up a situation like me where you can continue to do them mm-hmm. in okay. regards to other women because yeah. otherwise you might end up being you know, in a situation of regretting what you haven't done right right okay that's a very 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 good point um all right i think we can uh, wrap up for here but uh hopefully this covid situation ends and uh we're talking about traveling to some other countries whenever that's actually you know possible right yeah i gotta get out there yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mem- remember you were mentioning you, uh, you're working on some like online dating program these days, right? Maybe you can yeah. talk a little bit about that. Um, I started a while back, uh, kind of got derailed a bit because of the family thing, just having a kid, but uh, it's in regards to online dating. So uh, online dating is definitely not like a complete solution mm-hmm. to meeting girls. I think it's just a small part, but it's a tool, especially in the coronavirus world, mm-hmm. um, where it can be harder to get out. Uh, but yeah, it's a tool to meet women uh, when you're kind of at home or you can't you can cruise around. It's quite good for traveling as well. But the book is basically um, how to set up a good online dating profile, how okay. to take good pictures, and kind of essentially create a, a funnel. 
to filter women so that you can get exactly what you want mm, instead okay. of wasting a lot of time. All right, that's really good. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe when that comes out, it's a ebook. I think you mentioned, right? All right, cool. And I think you said it might have like a Bumble special Bumble offer or something yeah, yeah, like I think that. Yeah, special modules for uh, various different dating apps. So, All right, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, maybe when that comes out, we'll uh, we'll have you on for a round two and can ask uh, some questions relevant to that. You know, so definitely. All right, so signing out here from uh, Cafe here in Seoul, and until next time.